Now, the number of asylum seekers from Saudi Arabia has tripled, according to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. The UN agency says there were more than 800 cases reported in 2017, compared with less than 200 back in 2012. A number of Saudi men and women have reportedly fled the kingdom due to fear of persecution or political activism. There's also the recent case of the Saudi teenager, teenager Rahaf al Qunum, who was granted refuge in Canada, which has drawn international attention. Talking to Besma Mamani about this now, professor at the University of Waterloo in Canada, a senior fellow at the Centre for International Government. Uh, Governor, it's nice to have you with us again, Basma. I think the important thing, first of all, to look at is the time frame here. 2012 to 2017, um, usually when we think about Saudi Arabia these days, we immediately think about the impact of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, but this started well before he came into power. It did, and, and I think it coincides with generally the Arab Spring writ large, uh, and really many people feeling as though that, uh, frankly, you know, political... Uh, commentary, uh, free thought is, is frankly no longer welcomed in the post-Arab Spring entire Middle East. In many ways, it's not just Saudi Arabia. Uh, but certainly, I think there is uh, something to be worried about here, because, of course, Saudi Arabia is indeed uh, increasingly rounding up many people, activists, uh, many women's rights activists, of course, predominantly. But there is also uh, everything from poets to intellectuals to writers. Uh, so there is a, a great feeling that there is a clamping down on, uh, let's say, political thought at the same time. And it's important to point this out, that there's a lot of social reforms and economic reforms that may in fact be welcomed by the vast majority of many Saudis. It's hard to see that changing, though, is there? Because obviously we know it's such a closed society in Saudi Arabia and international pressure uh, on most things to do with Saudi Arabia doesn't really make a lot of difference. Yeah, and, you know, I think that you, what you're seeing is two sort of, you know, push and full fact, factors in many ways. And, you know, yes, there will be, I think, increasing number of uh, Saudis who are just not willing to sort of uh, take the grand bargain that's being offered to them by the regime, which is, you know, enjoy life as a consumer. Uh, you will have uh, more freedom, uh, social freedom, yes, more theater, more music concerts, but at the same time, you can't speak your mind. Remember, this is a society that is hyper-connected. Uh, there are more people per capita on Twitter in Saudi Arabia than any other country in the world. So, mm. you know, clearly the idea of, you know, engaging in political issues is something that many Saudis have been increasingly doing. And that's just not welcome in the new Saudi Arabia. So it's a, it's a tension uh, for, for many Saudis to choose which one to sort of accept. And I think that, you know, there is probably more recognition, particularly post Khashoggi, but also mm. after Rahaf's case, that many countries do see Saudi Arabia as in Indeed, you know, clamping down on its own dissidents, and so they may be more welcoming to, to refugees, and that may, in fact, uh, sort of increase the asylum cases as well. Okay, that's what I wanted to ask about the number, because we're saying 800 here, that's the number that the UNHCR has given us, but, you know, taking that step of seeking asylum is actually a big step, and it's not something you can go back from. I wonder if you think there could even be higher numbers there, those who don't want to, 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 to step up or step forward. Yeah, I mean, I think the numbers will continue to go up. Uh, you know, certainly there is no relaxation uh, of political thought in the country. It, it seems to be getting more and more, I think, uh, consolidated in terms of what people are expected to do, basically rah-rah the, the current, uh, you know, uh, regime, and, and that's the only sort of discourse allowed. So I think there's going to be more of that. And there also may be many Saudis outside the country. I mean, you think of someone like Jamal Khashoggi, who was, you know, not seeking asylum, but pretty much in self-exile of people who indeed fear going back. Uh, and may indeed sort of take that route uh, where there is an international climate of being favorable towards asylum seekers from Saudi Arabia to in indeed apply while the, the iron is hot, so to speak, yeah. and, and, and see that their chances are probably higher now than, say, in four or five years when, uh, uh, when you know, Saudi Arabia is off the radar of the international media. Best Mamani, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for your time today.